Man, NVIDIA has done something absolutely mind-blowing, okay? The new standard of motion clarity, introducing ULMB 2.0. The more you buy, the more you save, okay? I'm going to explain you how this works based on the Blur Busters law. But let me start by showing you this, because in my opinion, this is just absolutely mind-blowing and we are always criticizing Nvidia and saying that they are just greedy corporation and you know, that's what it is. It's, they're just about making money but they need to be praised for this. Let's take a look at this. This is a video from uh, Monitors Unbox and this was the review. I'm gonna have a link in the description of this video. So this uh, review this is a review of the PG27AQN, 360 Hertz gaming monitor. And this monitor didn't support backlight strobing or any motion blur reduction technique. And they are basically, NVIDIA is basically upgrading the motion clarity of this monitor in 4X without you paying them more money. Okay, you just bought your monitor before. This review is from six months ago, okay? So let's say you purchased this, this monitor six months ago and NVIDIA is upgrading the motion clarity of your monitor in 4X. We need to praise that. That's absolutely mind-blowing and let me show you the proof that this monitor didn't have backlight stro strobing listen to this having such fast response times would have made this monitor a great candidate for strobing provided the backlight was up to scratch as there's more flexibility with the strobe timing when response times are really fast I feel not including the tech here is a bit of a misstep that hurts the versatility of the monitor as see they didn't include the feature when this monitor was released and now let's take a look at this so this is the pg27 aqn let's take a look at this on the nvidia website let me minimize this see supported monitors available now ulmb2 is available now on the asus rock Swift 360 Hertz PG27 AQN. Okay, PG27 AQN. They upgraded the motion clarity of this monitor. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, fantastic. I, I would even like to, you know, compensate. Like reward NVIDIA for that. I mean, give them my money. <laughs> okay, this is fantastic. Absolutely amazing. You know, great. I mean, we are always criticizing NVIDIA. So let's give them props when they deserve it. Okay, they deserve to get props for this. And I haven't seen anyone uh, talking about this. Okay, but now let's, let's let me explain how this works and why this is so fantastic and i'm gonna have a link in the description of this video to all the sources that i'm going to be using so let's take a look at this how this works very simple we're gonna take a look at this short 30 seconds video from nvidia and how this works so basically the entire backlight is flashing okay and here's the key it is going to flash exactly at the right time to show you the color that you're supposed to see. So in the transition, this transition, you're not going to see anything. And that is going to reduce the artifacts, the crosstalk, okay? So what this is doing basically is flashing the backlight 25% of the frame time, okay? So by reducing the persistence, the pixel visibility time to 25%, you are improving the motion clarity in 4X. So you reduce the persistence in 4X 
you improve the motion clarity in 4x. So what does that mean? Very simple. If you have a 360 hertz monitor, 4x, you multiply 360 by 4 and that gives you 1440 hertz. So that's going to look like a 1140 hertz you know, LCD monitor playing a game at 1,444 FPS. That's incredible. So what we're doing here is we're trading brightness for motion clarity. And for example, the full screen brightness of, of these monitors might be like 500 nits. And when you activate the feature, you're going to lose brightness, but it's not going to be that much brightness. Actually, this is one of the best things about this ULMB 2.0. It has a standard of quality, okay? So for a monitor to be certified or to have this ULMB 2.0 feature, it has to have an effective motion clarity of 1000 Hertz. So what that means is one millisecond of persistence equal to one pixel of motion blur when moving at 1000 pixels per second. And the full screen, okay? The full screen brightness needs to be 250 nits. They do not specify here full screen brightness, but this is what it is. I saw a review I'm gonna show you here, and the full screen brightness was 250 nits. That's a lot of brightness. That's as bright as you need for SDR, okay? You don't need 500 nits for SDR full screen. That's eye searing. And it doesn't improve the motion clarity, the, the picture quality at all. Especially on LCDs when you increase the brightness and you get worse black levels. And also for a monitor to have this ULMB2, it has to support that feature at the full refresh rate of the monitor. So for example, if you have a 360 hertz monitor, it's not like you're going to insert a black frame and then the motion clarity is gonna be limited to 360 hertz, okay? No, you can quadruple the motion clarity <laughs> by using this technique. Of course, instead of quadrupling the motion clarity, they could just do 3x or 2x, whatever they want. The requirement is to get one millisecond of persistence at least. So if a monitor can achieve one millisecond of persistence, that's enough. So it would need to be 240 Hertz with 4X motion clarity, but it could be 360 Hertz with 3X motion clarity. So it doesn't have to necessarily be, uh, you know, 4X motion clarity improvement. So it could be a 360 hertz with 3x motion clarity and it'd be even brighter than 250 nits. But I wouldn't do that. That doesn't make any sense. I much rather get the better uh, motion clarity. So what else to explain? This crosstalk situation. Let me explain what this is. Basically, the, how clean the motion is. Okay. So we know how clear the motion can be by understanding the Blur Buster's Law. So the Blur Buster's Law tells you that motion clarity is limited by persistence, meaning that the minimum motion blur possible of any display technology cannot be better than its persistence, okay? The pixel visibility time is what tells you how good can the motion clarity be. So now, any display can have one millisecond of persistence, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that display will have one pixel of motion blur when moving at 1000 pixels per second, okay? The motion clarity can be affected by the gray to gray the responsiveness of the pixels. So this is where this ULMB2 is shining, okay? This is what they are trying to do. So basically, you see here on this animated video that what we want to see is this full screen colors, for example. Let me play this again. We want to see 
these full screen colors. Red, we want to see red. Blue. But now, don't show me this transition here. When the pixels, when the gray to gray is a limitation, the backlight is going to turn off so you don't see the defects. That's the idea. The idea is to synchronize and to control when is that pixel changing to the correct color so we can show you that only and we don't show you the defects, okay? That's the idea of this technology and they're showing you that in this graph. So for example, they're showing here the top of the screen transition. So the, the screen, the transitions of the pixels is left to right, top to bottom. So we see here top of the screen transition, bottom of the screen transition. So they are starting on a different moment. So when they are both, you know, in the right place, now we're going to show you the picture. Now we're going to have this pulse, this full screen flash, okay? And this is, this is basically the target color. So we, we want to show you that target color with minimum, ar minimum artifacts, minimum interpolation artifacts, crosstalk. They, they call that crosstalk. So now, let's take a look at how good that looks. So this is a video. I'm going to have a link in the description of this video uh, to this video. So you can see it is a very, very good video. It is from Bad Seed Tech. And the video is called NVIDIA Really Clear Things Up. So basically what he did here is he compared this ASUS PG27AQM ULMB 2.0 with the Sawi XL2566K with Diac Plus Premium, okay? And what he did is he followed the UFO test with a camera to take a picture. So now he doesn't specify here what was the speed of the test. So I'm going to guess this is just the default speed, which is 960 pixels per second. And he should have taken the picture at 1440 pixels per second, okay? To match the, the, the motion clarity that this is supposed to have. But I'm not sure, maybe he did, uh, he did it at four, uh, 1440. But I, I'm not sure, he doesn't specify that. So let's take a look at the picture quality. This is very good. Okay? This is very, very, very good, this ULMB2. I mean, I would call this irrelevant crosstalk. I mean, it, it, it's, this doesn't matter at all. Doesn't matter. On my CRT, when I see that fantastic, clear motion, I don't really care about the trailing artifacts. When, you, when that UFO test or when the objects in the game are moving so fast and you can see them very clear, this is irrelevant. This is absolutely incredible motion clarity. So this here might be a little bit more annoying on the Saui. It's still very good. I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't notice this playing a game. Very, very difficult because on the games we have today, we have TAA anyway. So with TAA, with that temporal anti-aliasing, you get this kind of stuff and even worse. So... This is not gonna be an issue on gaming today. It, it only it would only be an issue if you have raw pixels, and if you have raw pixel, the aliasing is terrible. So maybe for competitive gaming it doesn't matter, but who can drive, you know, raw 4K <laughs> at 360 frames per second, rock solid? It's it's, it's almost impossible right now. But well, it, it is. It might be possible with frame generation. Because you can use frame generation even without, uh, even without that. Oh, you saw now we have the. So yeah, you can use frame generation even with with um, with native resolution without DLSS. So if if you really want to get the clearest motion, you would use SMAA or or no anti-aliasing at all to prevent that TAA blurriness and inter in an artifacts, and then just use uh, frame generation. So let's take a look at this other video, which I'm also going to have a link in the description. This was the review of, uh, from Monitors Unbox again, the review of the BenQ XL2566X. Okay, And here we can see a picture of 
this Diac Premium again and the crosstalk. So now, again, I don't know what was the speed of the test. So if I have to guess, this test was taken at 1440 and the other picture was taken at 960 pixels per second because here I can definitely see more crosstalk than on the previous picture. That's why I'm showing you this picture also because here I can see quadruple <laughs> ghost. So not, not two, I can see four of them. One, two, three, and the four is very faint, unnoticeable. But I can definitely see cross talk here. This is not clean at all. So, yeah, I'm going to end with this. The motion clarity of these monitors is absolutely incredible. I mean, we're talking about better than CRT. <laughs> That's like hands down. Now, the problem is you need to get 360 FPS rock solid or 240 FPS rock solid. These monitors support. Uh, the same technique at other refresh rates. You could even use it at 120 or even 100. I am not 100% sure because I haven't tested these monitors, but I believe that that should be an option, no problem whatsoever. So you do need to get that high frame rate. It needs to be rock solid. Okay, this doesn't work with VRR. So, but it is very good. So now, but the the elephant in the room he, here is the picture quality. Otherwise, I would tell you to run and buy one of these monitors. But the problem is these are LCD monitors, okay? So the contrast is not going to be very good. The black levels are very bad, actually. LCD black levels are trash. <laughs> We're talking about eye-searing black levels, and it's just not, uh, not good. Uh, but it is a great thing to have NVIDIA focus on motion clarity. But what we really need right now is OLED to get to 480 hertz and for them to implement pulse width modulation, the same we have on the LGC1. They can easily do 3x motion clarity on an OLED and absolutely obliterate any of these monitors. We're talking about unprecedented levels of motion clarity better than VR headsets right now. Okay, and all it can definitely do that. I can do it on my LG C1 and it looks absolutely incredible. So if, if we can get next year or two years from now, if we can get a 480 hertz monitor or TV, I much rather have a gigantic TV, but you know, I don't see any reason of these companies ever releasing a 480 hertz TV because you know, to watch 24 FPS movies, and it doesn't make any sense. But we can expect for sure a 480 hertz OLED monitor for sure. That's going to come. So now, will they implement PWM? Probably not, unfortunately. But they should because <laughs> to have an LG C1 that is 480 hertz and is doing PWM at 960 <laughs> and is reducing that persistence, that pixel visibility time to 38%, like the LG C1, based on my testing, that would give you a motion clarity that is just absolutely ridiculous, <laughs> okay? We're talking about perfection. I mean, yeah, I, I, can, I can only dream about that. But yeah, let me know your thoughts and opinions and if you have any questions.